Hello, I'm Johan Klockers from KBM Geisler, and I'm here together with my colleague Alan to talk about the NOEL 5, a new high performance Risk 5 processor family. But first, a little bit about what we do at our office in Gothenburg, Sweden, as a Geisler part of KBM. We provide a synthesizable IP core library, which we have over the last 15 years used to design a number of components. Uh, we sell these mainly for high reliability use. Of course, RISC-V did not exist when we started out, so that was another open CPU architecture. We are not leaving that architecture behind, and we actually developed the next version of it in parallel with the NOEL-5. But with the RISC-V momentum continuing to build, we felt that it was time to expand our architecture portfolio. We provide development boards for these components, and our software department works on compiler and operating system support, and they also develop simulators and debuggers. Now, GRLib, our IP core library, contains everything you need to define your own SLC. Processors, bus infrastructure, peripherals, and memory controllers. And note that this is not simply an IP core library, but rather a complete design environment. There are GUI tools for configuring IPs, and also a script environment that can generate project files for various EDA tools and launch them. With an OL5 now in GRLib, it's simple to use the rest of these IP cores with a RISC-V CPU. All our code is written in VHDL, but at the lowest level, uh, we instantiate abstractions of common major components, which then map to various FPGA and ASIC technologies. The NOEL 5 is a RISC-V RV64GC CPU core, and we have multi-core Linux up and running on it. Uh, we went with a dual issue into the pipeline in this design to significantly improve performance over our previous generation cores. Fault tolerance is coming, but not available at this time. Uh, regarding performance, we are currently at 4.4 core mark per megahertz, down 5% from our initial Christmas 2019 release due to some frequency optimization. Uh, this will change, hopefully mainly upwards over time, uh, both from work on the implementation and from compiler improvements. Uh, it's possible to build NOEL 5 with only a single pipeline to save on resources, and this will of course affect performance, but we still reach three core mark per megahertz. Development is ongoing, but uh, we are currently meeting timing at 100 megahertz on uh, Silenx Ultrascale FPGA. In a bit more detail, we have the 64-bit integer instruction set with extensions needed to run Linux. Um, there will be two different FPU configurations, where the one we are releasing under the GNU General Public License is designed to be small rather than fast. Uh, even for simple operations, it uses half a dozen cycles or so each. Um, but it fully supports the F and D extensions. For commercial licensing, we will be adding a modified version of our DRFPU, which is fully pipelined and currently does most operations with a throughput of one per clock cycle and with a four cycle latency. Uh, we support all the normal CPU modes, of course, and there is standard RISC-V physical memory protection as well as virtual memory. Uh, the upcoming release will add support for RV32, <clears throat> and we are working on the hypervisor, user-level interrupt, and bit manipulation extensions. We are also looking into the possibility of later adding vector operations. The current implementation uses a seven-stage dual issue in order integer pipeline. Uh, the two issue lanes have some differences, but they both contain full ALUs. And to help with performance in the presence of dependencies, there is a complete extra set of ALUs and branch unit late in the pipeline. At this time, we only support 39-bit virtual addressing and 32-bit for the RV32 case, of course. Uh, actual physical addressing is configurable. Uh, there are separate fully associative translation side buffers uh, for instructions and data. Uh, physical memory protection can also be used with MMU active, and all page table activities are handled in hardware. While RISC-V does not actually define a cache and thus the concept of uncacheable areas, we are experimenting with support for it in page tables, but it can also be hard-coded. Uh, if and when there is a standard for this, we will embrace that. Our level one caches are single cycle access with an AHB bus, and they are virtually indexed but physically tagged. The replacement policy is least recently used, and we support up to four-way set associativity and 16k byte per cache. To enable dual issuing, the instruction cache delivers 64 bits per cycle. The data cache is write through, and we use snooping for coherence between multiple cores, and there is a store buffer to improve write performance. We have a level 2 cache available for commercial licensing, and it has both HB and AXI4 backends. Uh, that can be up to 4-way associativity, and it can be split between multiple cores, and the size can be up to 2 megabytes. 
the level two cache allows for address ranges to be configured as either write through, write back, or uncached. A few more details on the engine pipeline going from left to right. Uh, please note that optimization work is ongoing for both FPGA and ASIC targets, so it's possible that details may change here. Um, in the instruction fetch stage, we're using both the branch predictor and the branch target buffer. Uh, we don't want to store the pipeline on branches when it's not needed. Uh, and we continue branch handling in the decode stage <coughs> where a return address stack is used, and we also deal with non-conditional branches there. Uh, the decode stage also figures out if the next two incoming instructions can run together through the pipeline or not. Uh, with our late LUs and branch unit, that may be possible even if one of them depends on the other, but there are other cases where they may have to execute alone. For example, due to limited resources in the pipeline. Since there are some differences between the two lanes, the decode stage uh, may let the two instructions in a pair swap places if that helps. Then in the register access stage, we check whether the instructions can execute early or must be delayed to the late LUs and branch units. Uh, if there are dependencies that can't be met, pipeline bubbles are inserted as needed. The FPU instructions branch out from the execute stage and will run in parallel with the entry pipeline unless they must return results to it. If so, the pipeline bubbles are inserted here as well, and the same applies to integer divides. At the memory access stage stores the entire pipeline if it can't directly provide data from the cache or push stores to the write buffer. <clears throat> in what we call the exception stage, we have the late execution units and branch unit that I mentioned. And finally, in the write back stage, we know if an instruction was actually supposed to be executed. So from here, we notify the FPU about this. It may need to cancel what it's working on. Uh, when available, we strive to follow the RISC-V standards, and that includes supporting the standard debug module. And there is direct access to both the general purpose registers and the control and status registers. And there's a program buffer that allows for implementing other debug functions. Regarding triggers, we currently support matching and instruction count. Lacking a standard, we have added our own implementation of instruction tracing, and there is also support for AMBA bus tracing. Of course, our own debugger, GRMON, fully supports the node 5. Uh, we also have a standard RISC-V platform level interrupt controller. Uh, Node 5 is a family, of course, uh, built from the same actual code base. Uh, it will go all the way from tiny 32-bit single-issue microcontrollers without either cache memory protection or FPU, all the way up to the high-performance variants I've been talking about here. <clears throat> In the middle, there are things like a lower-performance 32-bit core, which could still be fully Linux-capable. Uh, we will provide these as subsystem configurations, including some basic peripherals, and they will be fully verified by us. Here's a slide outlining the current Node 5 software ecosystem provided by Geisler. Uh, we provide tool chains for bare metal, RTEMs, Linux, and VxWorks, and pre-built Linux images can be downloaded. Uh, board support packages are available for RTEMs and VxWorks 7, and we are looking into supporting Sapphire on the Node 5. There is currently no support for uh, the Node 5 in our TSIM3 simulator, but there is in our GMON3 debugger. At this time, we do not provide any bootloaders. Um, the XNG, PyCoS, and Dalehouse hypervisors are being ported. And now I'll be turn the presentation over to Alan. Hello, my name is Alan Bardizmanyan, and I will continue with the remaining of this presentation. And uh, I will talk about the NOIL 5 fault tolerance. And NOIL 5 fault tolerance is under development, but we will give you some info about what will include. Um, fault tolerance consists of many different issues and those are resulting in different uh, levels. For example, the hard errors like latch-ups are handled on the technology platform level and the soft errors like single event upsets or transient errors, those are partly handled in the technology level with cell selection and on the design level which is the RTL level and that's what the NOAA 5 fault tolerance concerns. The purpose of the NOIL 5 fault tolerance is to allow software execution to continue uninterrupted in the presence of correctable errors and to prevent corrupted state to propagate outside of the processor and even the system on chip, minimize the jitter in the execution time due to the error correction operations and uh, prevent error build-up to avoid uncorrectable errors. And in addition, NOIL 5 fault tolerance uh, reports the correctable and uncorrectable errors so this fault tolerance is uh, complemented by the grlib ft features and so this includes uh, specific tech maps for each technology 
and then it has uh, protection for the on-chip peripherals. Uh, for example, all the peripherals using the system on-chip will be protected. And the uh, software libraries to allow end users to have a coherent handling of the errors in the system on-chip level. So now we come to the NoFi verification. NoFi verification consists of three main steps, which is the simulation-based software test, which is used in combination with the spike simulations, FPGA validation, and the trial implementation using the FPGA vendors like Xilinx, Altera Microchip, and ASIC flows for different technology nodes. And for the simulator tests, uh, we run the VHDS simulation, and each instruction in this simulation is compared with the execution in the spike. And if the effects of this instruction matches on both of them, then we assume it's correct. And it's possible to pass events between the VHDS simulation and the spike in order to be modified the spike a little bit. So this allows to even simulate the timer interrupts. So in this case, the simulation becomes independent from the hardware delays. So this allows to even compare instructions while booting Linux in VHDS simulation, for example, or run an application on it. And the main verification uh, happens through the extensive in-house random instruction generation. And the additional simulations like a Linux is complementary to this scheme. And here you see a very basic log diagram of the main verification scheme in which there is a random test pattern generator which generates the instruction stream, which is run through the VHDL simulation and the spike simulation and some events are passed to the spike simulation. And in the end, if each instruction's effects are compared 100% same on both of them, then we assume the verification is finished successfully. And this random task pattern generator can be replaced with a real application, like it can be a Linux boot or some bare metal benchmark or anything. Now, we will come to the NoFF availability. NoFF is uh, part of the GRLib IP library, and GRLib IP library has a dual licensing scheme. So we have commercial license and the free open source license. So GRLib has been a long-running open source effort. It started in 2015 with the Leon 3 processor, and Leon 3 is a, based on open standard called Spark V8. And since RISC-V is also open standard, we could easily adopt the RISC-V also use a dual licensing scheme. And providing the open source allows customers to evaluate the product and it allows academia to use in educational purposes and it even allows hobbyists to use in their projects. And historically, the contributions to this open source libraries was mainly on the template design and example design level because the patches for the components can require quite complex verification efforts, but uh, contributions are welcome, but the acceptance for the uh, patches can be quite high due to the verification effort and the contributors also has to agree the conditions to publish it. And we believe NOEL 5 will be quite run quite high in terms of open source processor because it will be very complete and it would allow many different configurations and it will be in the readable VHDL. So RISC-5, uh, NOEL 5 has already released in the GRLib the first version, which is the high performance one. But in the upcoming December 2020 release, we will include much more features. So you will be able to choose between a 64-bit or 32-bit processor, or you will be able to choose between a dual issue or single issue processor, depending on your performance needs and the area constraints. And when you download the GRLib, you will have the, you will find the ready made bit files for uh, popular FPGAs like Xilinx, KCU-105, uh, Digit and RTN, etc. And some extensions are not available yet, but they will be included as soon as they become ready. And you could also see the array utilization of different these five configurations like the high performance or the tiny ones, the logic utilization in the uh, spreadsheet. And one of the biggest advantages of 
GRLIP is that you can build your own system on chip. So what you need to do is you just need to download it and install it with reading the instructions and select the template design depending on which FPGA you have and build it and test it. And then you can even configure it, the components you have. And then, yeah, you can even modify the template design depending on your needs. And one thing should be noted is that the free open source, the GPL version, includes the processor cores and some blocks where you can build a basic system on chip. If you get the commercial license, that will include the, all the cores in the GPL and many more additional cores like ASP bridge, the memory controllers, etc. And if you have the FT license, then you will be able to enable the FT features for all these IP cores you have. And there are some separate license cores like the high performance floating point unit, the space fiber or level two cache. And if you have any questions regarding open source, uh, GRLib, you can always follow our, you can visit our discourse and ask your questions. Now, when it comes to Noel 5 adoption, right now, uh, Noel 5 is used in two European Union projects. The first one is the the risk project, dependable real-time infrastructure for safety critical computer. And this is a collaboration between industry and academia. And, uh, and the, the point here is to have a final product. And this final product will be a system on chip and it will have a multi-core Noel 5. It will have level two cache, level three caches and interconnects and possible accelerators. And the Xtratom hypervisor will be ported to this system on chip. So the end users will get this and develop their software directly. And there will be some real-time research also, and you can find the more details in the website. And the other one is the CD in the self monitor, self monitor dependable platform for high performance safety critical systems. And this will be mainly focused on very high performance application where dependability is very important. And there are already very exciting use cases planned for this one. For example, space robotics, autonomous train, and the autonomous robot. And you can also find information on the project website. And finally, these are the three important links that you might want to remember from this. The first one is the information about the Noel 5. The second one is to get the GRLIP. And the third one is if you have any questions regarding the open source GRLIP. And thank you very much for listening. And you are always welcome to visit our online booth where you can ask all your inquiries.